Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Microwave Sam. Today's tutorial is going to be about Amazon Web Services, Amazon EC2, and we're going to create a Red Hat instance on Amazon EC2. First thing that we want to do is we want to open up our web browser. At our web browser, we want to go to the Amazon Web Services website. It's called aws.amazon.com. We want to create an account on AWS if we don't have one already. You can create a free account easily by this orange button where you'll type in your email address and select I am a new user. Then you press enter. I'll skip ahead, just follow the instructions that the email gives you and you'll have a new account on AWS. So I'm gonna go to the top right on the home page and select AWS Management Console. I'm gonna sign into my AWS account and it's going to take me to the AWS Management Console. At the top right, you can select your location. Since I live on the East Coast, I'm going to select US East, North Virginia. Now at the left side, you can see all the tools that AWS provides. I'm going to select EC2 because it's the virtual servers on the cloud. We're going to select running instances. If you're a new account, you'll have zero running instances. And at the top left, with the blue button, we're going to launch instance. By clicking this button, it'll take us to the setup page with steps to set up our instance. We're going to select Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.0, which is free tier eligible at the moment, and press the blue button at the right side. Now it'll take us to step two. You can leave this default because it's free tier eligible, the t2.micro type. And you're gonna select next configure instance details. You're gonna continue to go next because these default settings for the step three to five are okay. You're gonna select next again until you get to step six, which is configuring security group. You can create a new security group, which will do so and I'm going to call this security group website. On the description, I like to call it security website for basic websites or something of the sort so I know what security group name this is. Now I like to add three more additional rules along with SSH. I like to add HTTP, I like to add HTTPS, and I like to add a custom TCP rule with the port range 8080. Now these rules are for website um, access, making it public for anyone to go to your website. And we're going to go to the blue button and review and launch. You can leave make general purpose by default and press the blue next button. And then at the bottom right you can press the blue launch button to launch your instance. Now over here, you need to select a new key pair or choose an existing key pair. We're going to create a new key pair. These key pairs are used to access your website and your virtual machine for customization. So we're going to create a new key pair. We're going to give it a name and we're going to hit that gray download key pair. These key pairs can only be downloaded once, so make sure you download it and put it in safe place then hit the blue button to launch the instance. Now at the top left, we're going to hit the orange square cube, and we're going to go back to EC2, go back to running instances, and you can see a new instance is starting to load up, the instance state is pending, and the status check is initializing. It's going to take a little while to set up your new instance, and let's give it five minutes. After about 5 minutes, your instance should be fully booted and running. If you click on it, you'll see the description underneath, but at the bottom right, more importantly, you can see the public DNS and public IP. Now, I'm going to open up a command prompt, but for everyone else, you can open up your terminals if you're on Mac or on a Linux distribution. I integrated SIGWIN with my terminal, so I have POSIX functionality. So I can use these commands, ls to list all the files in my directory. I'm going to go over the commands if you don't know what they mean. Now I'm going to change directory to my desktop by typing cd space desktop. cd stands for change of directory like I said. 
and it changes directory to my desktop because I want to see where my tutorial website.pem I'm gonna refer to it I write ls and I can see all the files on my desktop and tutorial website.pem is listed right here now we're going to SSH onto our instance and I'm going to write SSH space dash I. The dash I flag is used to specify a key file right afterward. So I use dash I space tutorial website dot PEM. And then after that I'm going to write the user for the Red Hat instance which by default is EC2 dash user. I'm going to write the at symbol. Now I'm going to write the public DNS after the at symbol and paste it right on there. Then I'm going to press enter. I'm going to sign in and SSH to the virtual instance and press yes to this prompt. But it says warning unprotected private key file because the permissions are too open. We're going to change the permissions, but first let us do an ls-l. On Windows, sometimes you have this none group space. We need to change the group and give that file a group. So I'm going to write chown colon users tutorial website pem ls dash l to see all these permissions and I see that I've added a users group for tutorial website pem. The reason we do this is because you need a group to change permissions properly. Now the permissions are at the left of the file with this rwx rwx and we want to change the permissions chmod space 600 space tutorial website pem 600 will give only the owner of the file read and write access and then afterwards we should be good to ssh on our virtual instance so i'll run the ssh command again if i press up on the d-pad of the keyboard i can go to previous commands and just quickly press enter on that command where I said SSH with the key file on EC2-user and I get on the virtual instance of my Red Hat instance. So here we are on our virtual instance. So the next step is to start installing some packages to get our website running on the Red Hat instance. First thing we want to do is sudo space yum space install space httpd to get our web server running on this Red Hat instance. If you have a yes slash no, just type Y and press enter to install that package. Next thing that we want to install, usually I like to install these four packages for SQL and PHP. You don't have to if you don't need SQL or PHP, but I like to have SQL or PHP if I'm having a typical Apache web server. So I do sudo yum install these four packages, which I'll leave a link in the description. But I'll look over it, SQL dash server. SQL, PHP, and PHP-common, which is right over here. You just want to do a sudo yum install these four packages if you want SQL and PHP. Then you press Y, enter, and install the four packages. Next thing you want to do is you want to restart the HTTPD service by doing service space HTTPD restart but you need sudo because you need a super user to run restarting services and you just restart the service to make sure everything is restarted functioning running so you copy the public DNS and if you go to any um, using any web browser to this public DNS you can see the Red Hat Enterprise Linux test page it's public anyone can see this and you can go to your web page and see this test page and it says if you want to add content you have to go to that directory var slash www slash html so if we cd change directory to slash we'll go to the right in the beginning of the whole virtual instance we want cd to var then cd to www and then finally cd to html in this html directory is the content of the web page we can add content by first adding an index.html, which we'll do so by first installing a text editor. There's a text editor called nano, but you need to install it. So I do a sudo yum install nano. Now if I do nano index.html, 
pseudo nano index.html because HTML lies in a directory that needs root permission. We can start typing stuff in. I'm going to type in a little hello world page, simple index.html. And I'm going to press Control O to write and save the file, and then Control X to exit. The commands are right over there Control Alt to write and then Control X to exit. And if I refresh our public DNS page, you can see it says hello world, and you can update and provide content in that HTML directory. Thanks for watching, everyone. If this helped you, leave a like, favorite, subscribe.